In this GNS3 topology, you need to configure both DMVPNs as well as BGP. Now, network automation and programming are becoming more and more important for us as network engineers to know. Many years ago, I got tired of manually creating VPN configurations between devices. So I wrote this software called the VPN Config Generator. The software allows you to create VPNs, both simple and complex, within a few seconds. So rather than me manually configuring the devices, I'm simply going to use this to make it easy for me. I've now started a subscription-based service where you can get access to all my courses for a monthly fee. And in addition, you'll be able to get access to the VPN config generator as well as other software. I'm also working on some exciting developments. I don't want to say too much yet, but if you join my subscription service, you'll get access to some really exciting stuff in the near future. Currently, you'll have access to software and videos, and that includes all my courses and future courses that I create. But some exciting stuff is going to be happening soon, so I would suggest that you join the subscription-based service before the prices increase. Now, as I've said, this software was written a few years ago. It's only supported on Windows. But what it allows you to do is create many types of VPNs. In this example, I'm going to configure a site-to-site -site VPN, specifically a full mesh VPN. This example will create a configuration for both GRE and IPsec. But what I'll do initially is just copy the GRE configuration, and then I'll add the IPsec configuration later. Initially, I'm going to configure customer site 1 as the hub of the DMVPN, and customer site 2 as a spoke. The IP address of customer site 1 is 8832. So what I'll do is configure the hub router as C1, with IP address 8832. And the spoke site is going to be customer router 2 with an IP address of 8862. As per our GNS3 topology, internet facing interfaces are gigabit 01 on both routers. So I'll change this to gigabit 01 on both the hub and spoke site. So in the VPN config generator, we can see that the IP addresses are configured correctly. We can see the outside interfaces. We can see the router names. We can then specify IP addresses to use on the tunnel interfaces and the tunnel numbers to use. To be consistent, I'll set them both to triple one and I'll leave the IP addresses as 11 across the tunnel. You may want to use a different subnet in your 10 range or 172.16 range as an example for your tunnel interface rather than using this range. So as an example, I could decide to use 192.168.1.1 and 192.168.1.2 on my tunnels rather than using Network 11. You can set various options such as ISA KMP options. You may want to specify a different pre shared key. You may want to specify advanced options with regards to next top routing protocol, such as your network ID, tunnel key, and other information. I'll leave that at the defaults. You also may want to specify which routing protocol to use across the tunnel. I'm going to specify network 10 as the network to advertise on the inside. When I create this configuration, the software automatically adds the network for the VPN connection 
as well as the internal network that we specified. So this is our routing protocol as specified on the hub site. Notice the IPsec configuration is displayed and so is the tunnel information with the IP address on the tunnel interface on the hub as well as the spoke site. I'll add these configurations below this video. But notice we've got our DMVPN configuration. Now in this first example, I don't need the IPsec configuration. So I'm simply going to copy the DMVPN configuration. And I'm going to remove this single command on the tunnel because we don't want to enable encryption. So this will be our hub site for the spoke. I'm going to copy the tunnel configuration and EIGRP configuration and remove this tunnel protection. So again, this is the configuration for the hub. This is the configuration for the spoke. What I'll do is copy the hub configuration to customer site one. Before I do anything else, I'll save the configuration as it is at the moment in case there are problems. And then I'll paste that configuration into the router. So there's our DMVPN configuration. We can see that the tunnel interface has come up because we have IP reachability to the tunnel endpoint, which is customer site two. Here's customer site two. What I'll do now is copy the DMVPN configuration to the customer site and paste that into the router. So show IP interface brief. We can see that the tunnel has come up. So show DM VPN. We can see the peer IP address. We can see the tunnel IP address. And we can see that this is a static configuration on the tunnel. So can we ping the outside interface of the router? At the moment, we can't. And that's because I need to add a static default route, which I forgot to add. So I need to add a default route to my ISP. And I need to do that on both sides. As you can see over here, we it says a EIGRP neighbor relationship has been established. But that won't work unless my routing is fully configured. We don't have a default route configured on the side. So IP route, set up a default route to 8831, which is ISP router 4. But let's confirm that we can ping the other side of the tunnel. Yes, we can. So show IP EIGRP neighbor. Hopefully, this neighbor relationship will work properly and I'll be able to ping the neighbor across the tunnel, which I can. So again, show IP route. We need to have a route to the destination. In other words, we need to have IP reachability to the other side of the tunnel, which we now have. Show DMVPN shows us that the local router has learnt about the peer dynamically. In other words, the spoke has initiated the connection to the hub site. Show IP EIGRP neighbor. We have an EIGRP neighbor relationship across the tunnel interface. This is the IP address of the neighbor. We should be able to ping that neighbor, which we can. We should be able to ping the internal network across the tunnel, which we can as well. Now, please remember the ISPs don't have a visibility of network 192 or network 10. They only have public IP addresses in their writing table. But Ubuntu 1 and Ubuntu 2 should now be able to ping each other across the tunnel. So ifconfig 
that's uh, the IP address of Ubuntu 2. On Ubuntu 1, can we ping 10.1.2.11? As you can see, we have IP connectivity across uh, the tunnel. IP address on the side is 10.1.1.11. So can Ubuntu 2 ping 10.1.1.11? Yes, it can. Again, the ISP routers have no visibility of the customer networks because the traffic is being sent through the tunnel. So on customer router one, show IP route, notice to get to network 10.1.2.0, the traffic is going through the tunnel. So I've got one spoke site set up, let's set up the other spoke sites.